Well, welcome. Um, I'm Electra Porzel with the Language of Consciousness Institute. And I just finished a fascinating conversation with a group of women about one of Einstein's new stories. But let me first tell you the old story that he thinks has been controlling a lot of our, um, our world processes. And you see it active in the world now. But let's look at the old story first, and then we'll talk about the new story. The old story says change happens through applications of force. So you see that in dictatorships and authoritarian systems where we're going to make you do this, even if you don't want to do it. Therefore, human progress means greater and greater ability to apply force and to manipulate the world with greater and greater precision. And we see that pretty active. So there wasn't a whole lot of fighting about this having been kind of an assumption that was present and acted upon in the Western world, for sure. And you see it active in the Midwest, the mid, the mid East right now, probably all over the world, outside of indigenous communities. Now, the new story, the one he thinks that is taking hold, the one that is opening us up to new ways to be, to be who we came here to be and be more with others and create a world that is sustainable. And here's the new story. Force is but one means through which creative intelligence is made manifest. In other words, you may have a really creative idea and most of the time the way it flows into a community is not by force. So I guess you could use force. We had a real discussion around that one. The universe operates through morphic resonance. Any change that happens anywhere, no matter how small, contributes to a field in which that change happens everywhere. Let me repeat that again. Any change that happens anywhere, no matter how small, contributes to a field in which that change happens everywhere. The first example we all thought of was the 100th monkey. Um, and in that, a skill was discovered by one monkey, and then more and more of his tribe, her tribe, started using the same skill and before they knew it all the monkeys on several different islands were using the skill even though they really hadn't met or observed the other monkeys so we started to say how does that work in a world um where um people have less and less attention span because of social media um they have to be really quick on responding on computers and social media. So one one person said that a professor at a college had found out that the attention span of her students is eight minutes. So um, it changes how you teach. It changes how you try and reach their minds to think longer, more complex and link concepts. The other discussion was around AI. Is AI going to take over the capability of creative thinking or creative solution making in human beings if they give up the practice of writing and developing your thoughts? And I think a lot of people have given up the practice of writing and developing their thoughts. And a certain percentage of the population still does it. The real question would be, are we robbing um, future generations of that capability if AI writes everything for them, put it that way. So that was a like, oh, what's going on? Now, what will that look like? One of the things we started talking about was trauma. And years ago, the only things that were recognized as, well, like even if you go back to the mid 1800s, there was this railroad whale um, syndrome in which if there was huge accidents and if the people weren't hurt, they didn't understand why they had any other reaction to it. Look, well, you didn't break a leg, you didn't lose an arm, so we don't know why you're acting the way you are. Well, it was the first time PTSD was actually recognized as a function. But what the society did then was they said, well, there's something defective with you then. 
and the people would take that on about themselves and that that thought pattern was I was defective because I still have whatever response I have and that was probably true I don't really remember PTSD or that that conversation about those reactions um till after the Vietnam War um being mentioned a lot and maybe it was before but in any case, what we're talking about is a recognition by um, more and more people about a certain state. Now, one of the examples at the end was, well, we've gone from not recognizing trauma to overemphasizing trauma, that people live their trauma. And if you recognize yourself, like I came from a dysfunctional family, I was blah, 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 blah then you identify that and you never change it. So it became an identity instead of something to work through and release so you can be more. So we started talking about all the different ways that are out there now for people to be able to open up to greater possibilities for their own lives. And yes, we have generational trauma, we have species trauma, we have trauma from marginal groups that we may be in. The real question is, do you identify with it? And what are you using? Well, how can you um, release the trauma so that it no longer has an impact on how you live your life? Um, we mentioned the, the language of creation templates. What they have you do is write within the template only life-enhancing, life-generating phrases. So you're writing what you crave to have in your life. And the more that your mind, all those neural networks are now connected with life generating, life enhancing phrases, the field of you is gets a different balance. So instead of having the life defeating trauma, you have all these different phrases around what you want in your life. Tantra always says, you know, like you just create a bigger field. Everything has a place. So that trauma is, is not like gonna as a fact that has existed is not going to disappear. But if your field gets larger and larger, your neural pathways get more and more, um, have more and more choices, different words and life enhancing, life generating phrases, you have more choices to respond, more perspectives to choose from when you make choice. So that's what we do in the Language of Consciousness Institute is help people learn how not just to write a template, but how to use it in their life so that they get out of looping thoughts, looping emotions, and they start creating the world that they crave. Now, somebody else was talking about um, uh, Dr. Renee Johnson, who does rapid eye movement, that they have a way to release certain patterns and open up possibilities for people to take on other ways of being that are near to what they crave for their own life or are what they own crave. They, we even got at the end on plant medicine and psychedelics are coming in back into psychology to be used with people to help them move out of trauma and into the life they crave. And when we look at that, we started going like, oh my God, we are in the middle of a morphic resonance where trauma is not considered something that will bind you and cripple you for the rest of your life, but it, you can use a tool to lessen its impact on you and to open your field up into a way of being that is more life enhancing life generating a way of being that's the way you crave to be and that when you're none of us are stuck anymore and so we thought oh my god isn't that great <laughs> we're in a field where that is becoming common and remember the the, the the definition was no matter how small any change contributes to a field in which that change happens everywhere. So the fact of the matter is, is that there are all sorts of different resources that we can make use of to create the world we crave. And many of us are craving a more sustainable and viable um, environment and social structure for future generations coming, for our present grandchildren and the future generations coming from them. And it was exciting to say, hey, 
we're part of this movement, part of opening up to the possibility that we can have more and be more. And um, I invite you to um, come and visit the website of the Institute. It's www.loc-institute.com. And look at what we do. See if this is a tool or a resource for you that might really help you expand your field of all that you crave, the good life-enhancing, life-generating stuff, and find ways to lessen the impact of trauma and let it be just a small fact of history and not something that lives your life for you. Thank you very much for listening, and I look forward to seeing you next week.